Hi, Karen Hadley here from stampingbees.co.nz, independent stamping up demonstrator. Welcome back, so lovely to see you again. Today, I'd really like to share with you a gorgeous stamp set. There's that word again, gorgeous. But a stamp set, it's a background stamp set and it's breathtaking bouquet. There is so many things you can do with this. I decided to do a little bit of background stamping and using some of my favorite um, medium sprinkles. So uh, let's get started. I will flip you over and I'll show you just what we're going to make today. Yes, yeah, so breathtaking bouquet is on page 31. 31 of the new mini catalog from January to June. Um, and obviously here there's some lovely examples of what you can do with this stamp set. So today, I'll just pop that over there. Today I would like to share with you this card. Now I've done it in some different colours and the one we'll make will be a different colour as well. Um, this is in um, Highland Heather and I have um, also used the sprinkles on here. Cut out some flowers or used a punch etc and of course I just had to add the little bee um, make the most of that stamp set and um, use it as much as I can so uh, that was this color and then this is lovely lipstick so what I did with this one as an alternative is I just watercolored the background with the lovely lipstick ink pad so I have used on both of these the uh, Fluid 100 watercolour paper. Beautiful, um, smooth, lovely watercolour paper. Just works so well. And I have used that on both. And just to show you a couple of examples with the different techniques with sprinkles or the ink. So using the ink pad, of course, it is a little, more, a little bit more softer, if you like that sort of thing, or using the sprinkles of course you get that intensity of color from those um, pigments which i just love so we are going to be making another one with sprinkles today just thought i would do another color just have so much fun you doing that so we will be doing um one in bermuda bay today so i have cut um the pa paper out already obviously the Thick white, whisper white cardstock, okay, is nine, is cut lengthways at 10 and a half centimetres. So the A4 and you just cut lengthways and you get two cards out of that. And then I have the black mat, which is 10 by 14.2. And then I have the Bermuda Bay, which we're going to be stamping on. This is the the watercolour paper. Now I have cut it a little bit bigger than the die we're going to use. So I have used these dies from this set here, the stitched nested labels. And this is, I think it's about the third size down, about the third size down. But I have cut it a little bit bigger because when I've got it on the Stamparatus, I want to be able to put the magnet and a bit of tape on. So I need to have that uh, covered. So I've cut that out, um, as I say, a bit bigger. Now, just pop that over there, pop that here. And I have cut another one out in black as well. The other thing I have pre-cut here is the thanks now i've got thanks but i will just trim that s off and i'm because i want to put you underneath and i have used just excuse me reaching over the well written dies now i use these all the time and as you can see i've got lots of ones that i've cut out with different colors and i just save them in there but i have popped the um picture from the catalog in here with the words so that i can refer to that it is quite hard to see what they are in the dies. So I find that very handy. And let me just put this to one side. So first of all, we will stamp this back. back. First of all, we will stamp the, sorry, just tidy this up, get everything away here. So this was 9.5 by 13.7. Mm -mm. 
so we are going to use a bit of watercolour paper. Just make room here. So what I have done, I've popped this background stamp, breathtaking bouquet, on to my Stamparatus. And then I have stamped it on to the sheet on the bottom here. So that just makes it easier when I am trying to place something to stamp, knowing where to, to go to get the stamp I want. If I wanted more leaves with a tiny bit of flower, I could go to the right, etc. So I just know that that's going to be in that spot. So it's good for, good for lining up. So I will just take this magnet off. And as I said, I've made this a bit longer. So I might just pop that there. And I'm just gonna put the magnet on the very bottom there. And I will use a little bit of tape at the top, just a tiny bit. Now, always good, especially with this sort of thing, to um, give it a really good rub with your anti-static pad because with watercolour paper, there are um, extra bits of grooves and things like that because it is watercolour paper and you could get some sprinkle from your embossing powder in there where you don't want it to be. So given that a good rub, <clears throat> now um, I need to find my Versamark. Where have I put that? Everything was, oh, here it is. Now, I don't need to do it around the edges, obviously, so I'm just gonna give it a good, just make sure you can see what I'm doing, a good ink up. Now, I will do this three times because of the same reason of giving a good wipe with your anti-static pad because there is some dents and grooves in this um, paper you really want to make sure that you have got your Versamark deep into all the bits of the paper so I will do it three times Perfect. And I might just add a little bit there. So there's a little bit of pink on this, which seems to stay. Doesn't have an effect once you put the embossing powder on, but it is quite handy because you can see, see where you've actually stamped or embossed. So let's just take that off. I'll just pop that over there because we will need it again in a moment. Pop the lid on there. Okay, so let's grab. So as I say, we're using um, the sprinkles. I'll just pop that over there. Okay. Oop. So just give it a good coating. Just hold it down the bottom because I'm going to be using that part of it. There we go. Just give it a tap to get any excess off. Now I am going to go, I'm going to pause. Well, I will cut this bit out. I'm going to go and heat emboss this and I will not um, just do it off camera so you can hear anything just the the blowing of the gun so I will go off and do that and cut that bit out and I will be back in a moment so here I am back again I have used the heat gun on this now I will bring over my little mat so I don't make this sprinkles are a little bit messy hence I don't put my jewelry on when I'm about to to use it so I do have this little mat that I like to use as you can see the mess is on here and not on my paper. Now I will just tape that down. That's the top and the bottom. And as I was saying before, randomly out of context, the watercolour crystals, pigment sprinkles. We are using the Bermuda Bay out of this today. Um, the other colour I used on the other card that I showed you was the Gorgeous Grape, but I did add a little bit of pink and green with that one as well. 
but I think I quite like it with just the one color. Now, I have tipped a little bit in here previously. I like to have a little bit in there. It's probably a bit much than I really need. A little bit in there because I like to just add with a aqua brush if I just want a little bit more depth. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spray. Now, as I've said before, you know, you do this and every single time it will come out different, which is just the beauty of it. And I'll get my aqua brush. I just want to sort of move it around a bit. It doesn't matter about the edges so much because we're not going to be using the edges. There we go, so I've coloured that all over. Now if I wanted to add a little bit more shading in the flower, that's where my powder comes in, I just dip my aqua brush in and add a little bit of that to shade the flower. So versatile and the colours, I mean you can obviously do it quite pale if you want to, just tiny bits of uh, sprinkle or you can put sprinkle here like this and use it as a paint and you can make things a bit paler if you don't want the vibrant colors but that's the part of the sprinkles that I actually really like is the depth the vibrancy of it so we'll put that to one side to dry isn't that just beautiful so I'm just going to fold that up and Pop it over here. Excuse me while I reach in front there. And I'll pop that over there as well. So the next thing we're going to do, so we'll just give this a little bit of a wipe. Don't need that in there. Let's get a bit of the Versamark off. So now I want to use my Bermuda Bay mat and I'm going to pop that within this square that I've stamped where I would like the stamp to be. I want to get it stamped. So a good thing to do, because I can't put the, um, the magnet on, is just do a little mark where you've put it so that if you do have to put it back you know where it goes and I'm just going to get some Bermuda Bay stamp that up want that bit on the corner <clears throat> So this is just for the background, so just give it a good ink. And pop it down. So I'm going to give it a really good rub because I don't want to have to go back and do it again. So I will just give it a good, strong press. The Stamparatus is the perfect stamp pad for these big stamps. It really is. We do have a block, but I just feel that this just makes it so much easier. There we go. So that's now all stamped on here. And I will pop that to one side and we will start putting this together. Okay, 
So I will glue this on to the black. I've got the garage door and everything open today because it is so warm and I'm doing this relatively early in the day or half past 11 but <clears throat> it just gets really really warm in here so I just wanted to get that done before I sort of made a hot mess. Okay, so with the beauty of being able to do things beforehand, I have actually prepared this one earlier. So the only other thing I did um, when it dried, I mixed some of the shimmer paint and some isopropyl alcohol in this container. You can use your Stamping Up one. I just had this already from a class I did. <clears throat> and just give it a light spray. And I don't know if you can see that that's got a lovely, lovely shimmer going on there. And there's my friendly fly back again. Oh, okay. Just going to put a bit of glue there and a bit of glue there. Just on that corner there because I'm only going to glue that part there. So I'm just giving that a little bit of interest on the side there. Oh, you always, this fly likes to come back and see what I'm doing, I think. Okay. So now I'm just going to put a bit of ribbon, a bit of ribbon, well I am going to put some ribbon, I'm just going to put a bit of tape on the back. Yeah, I finished that one, that's not very good, luckily I have another one there. that noise. I'm sure that was a bit deafening. So let me find. There we go. Oops. And I'm just going to peel it back off here. And I'm going to be using the satin ribbon, and it is basic black. It's shiny and gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, it's very shiny, very soft. So just enough to go around the front. <clears throat> some of my black dimensionals from the holiday catalogue. Pop that on the front. Snuff off there. We'll line that up. Next, we'll do the bow. Well, we've got the black one out. So I'm just going to tie just a simple bow. And then I'm going to just cut off the length that I need so I don't use too much. I'll trim that down a bit more as well once I've tightened it up so I'm just gonna you so see you just want do that and then just hold the tails and play with the bow until you get the size that you after don't want it too big but there we go so I'll just trim that down again now once again I'm going to color some ribbon 
This is the um, Whisper White, Whisper White Crinkled Seam Binding Ribbon. So great, just gorgeous. Now, <clears throat> we're just gonna color that in Bermuda Bay. It's just enough for a little bow on the top there. So I'm just using one of the Stampin' Up! blends and it just colors this and dries so quickly. Probably way too much, but that's probably good. So we'll let that dry for a moment and we'll add that in a minute. But the next thing we are going to do is use the, this is also in the mini catalog, this gorgeous little flower punch. I don't know the page offhand, but I'll pop that on the screen. So I'm just going to cut three of these. One, oh, better cut another one because that's gone flying. One, two, three. There we go. And I'll bring them back here. So this is dry now and one thing it does when you use the alcohol blends, it does go a little bit stiffer. Uh, all you need to do is just put it in between your fingers and just give it a bit of a scrunch up and it softens up again. So I'm just going to tie this onto here. That's how my little my black bow is going to stay on, but I'm also going to <clears throat> make a bow with this as well. There we go. So I don't want it too big. Make it a bit smaller. Trim that down. Okay. okay, so the next thing we'll do is we will pop pop this on. Also using dimensionals. would we do without these they just add so much more interest and dimension to our cards so that's it's going to go out there now <clears throat> with the flowers I have just added a bit of interest to them as well. So I've used my, Matt, actually I'll do the colouring first. So I have got the Bermuda Bay ink pad and I'm just using a dauber to just add a bit of colour into the middle. I think I have done this on another video with petal pink. And then I then use Whisper White, so I'll grab that <clears throat> and then I just do the edges. Oops, I'm using the wrong, well that's great isn't it? I'll have to go back and fix that. <laughs> so that just adds those that light colour to the tip. It's great because it just really does blend into the card a little bit, which is really good. It blends into the ink pad a bit too. So that adds a bit of depth to those flowers. And then we will use this bit of scrap here and cut out. Where is the other punch? So I've got the punch here for this, the leaves, the little leaves 
that I, this is from the annual catalogue. I'll just, it's just a scrap bit, as you can see, of pear pizzazz. And excuse me again, I've got the pear pizzazz here, and I have got a dauber, and I'm just going to, just going to do the edges a bit. Once again, just adding a bit of colour and depth, more, more realistic to what a leaf would be looking like. And just a bit there. Doesn't need to be a lot. And then you just get your, your pad. I leave the plastic on mine. It's the stamping pierce mat, stamp and pierce mat, and I am going to, with the leaves, I'm going to use my take a pick tool. I'm just going to run up the middle and add, I don't know if you can see that on there, just adding some veins on the leaves. So I'll hold that up, I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to switch it round, so that's the smaller and that's the larger one and then I'm just going to push into the mat with this one and that just brings those leaves up the petals of the flower just beautiful so easy to do just push down the middle and there we go little flower so we'll pop those up there as well and I will move the mat away. And we'll bring our card back. And we'll start popping things on. So with the thanks, I'll just trim that down. And then I will add a very, very small amount of glue. I forgot to put my sticky tape on the back when I cut it out. But it's all right. Just a little little dots now I have got it sticking off the tag a little bit so I don't need to do the K at the end so just wipe that off a bit <clears throat> okay so now I've just chopped this one of these leaves off here. I'll chop that off. And I need to pop a little bit of glue after popping it back away on the stem. So I only need to pop this on the stem just a little bit. And I'm going to pop that under there. And one of the flowers. So I've used the mini glue dots for these couple of these flowers and we can pop that there whoops pop that back and that's now stuck to there there we go just get my little Flattened it off a little bit. There we go. And another one. Pop that there. Now with the last flower, I actually used a glue dot because I didn't want... It's on top of here, so it is already up elevated a little bit but I did um, didn't think glue would work very well to keep that in place so I've just used a little glue dot there the mini the mini glue dots and pop that there and then we'll pop the other leaf on
I've just put a little bit of glue on the stem, really. I'll bring that around a bit to there. There's my little... Didn't want to play ball. There we go. Now, I have... So I did want a U, just a straight U. So I used that from... Just grab the set so I can show you. This set here, the Flourishing Phrases, that's in the annual catalogue. And I just wanted this U, so it's a little bit bigger, but not too bold. So the thing that you can do if you are wanting just to use a word, like a, one word out of a, out of a um, stamp greeting, there are a few ways you can tape across I think I've shown you that in another another video. Or you can, if I can find my black, oh, it was here. Here it is. My black stamping right, which is this is just filled with ink, and then all you do is colour in what you want out of that greeting. So, oops, now that's not going to be very good. I wasn't, I was trying to rush. Certainly don't want a little mark on there. So, <clears throat> I'll just add that to there. And then I have used the classic label punch to cut that out about about there and I will use a dimensionals again line that up <clears throat> with the edge of the Bermuda, Bermuda Bay and the last thing to add of course is the bling just move things away so you're not looking at all the rubbish oh no there's two more things to add isn't there of course my little B so I'll just colour in his body And I did put some shimmer on his wings, which does match in, of course, with the shimmer on the tag. And then we'll add the gems. So I've just popped. So these are also in the mini catalogue, Champagne Rhinestone base, Basic Jewels. So... I've put one each in the centre of, whoops, of each flower. And then I've just added a couple of smaller ones around the um, card, just pop one there, just to add that bit of balance, whoops, that one there, now I've also just used my, oh, you don't need to, but I've just fluffed up the wings a little bit, given them a bit of movement, you can use your um, bone folder, which is in here, I've put it away, that's why I couldn't find it, <gasps> And just give them a little bit of a a um, fold, just to so it's just not flat on your project. And I will add a dimensional for that. Pop that on there. 
I think that just really balances it out, that bee. <laughs> so that's that one done in Bermuda Bay. So just to show you again, the cards we have. So this one is done with watercolour. It's softer. It's just from the um, ink pad. And I've also sprayed that with the shimmer paint. Then we have this one, which is using two or three colours in the pigment sprinkles. But the base is uh, the base is Highland Heather, I think. Uh, gorgeous grape, sorry, gorgeous grape. And then this one we've done in Bermuda Bay. Now on the inside of these ones, if you like, I do usually add something. I've added a little flower here and on this one. So you could add any, any little flower on the inside. And I usually add that on the envelope as well. Just a little bit of interest on the inside of the card. There are some beautiful sentiments that you can also add to the inside of the card. There you go. I hope you have enjoyed. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. So lovely to have shared this with you. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Happy crafting.